Uh, good evening. Good evening. Hello, Charlie. Hello, everybody. Good to be in the house of the Lord tonight. Amen. Right? Uh, before we get started, y'all sing good. Y'all know that? Y'all do, man. Y'all sing good. So, but anyhow, before we get started, we got a song for us because, you know, I don't do the singing. I do the preaching. You do the singing. So, that's Priscilla. And you ask her to explain that later, she will. Uh, <laughs> coming up. We need to remember uh, I know Larry Tuesday night or Tuesday morning. See, everything's night with me. I'm not used to having morning time. Tuesday morning at, where is Larry? He's up here. You he move on Wednesday nights. That ain't Baptist like. Uh, on Tuesday 10 o'clock Larry has a Bible study. It's really good. I've not got to go. But I just, I've been in Larry's Sunday school class so it's got to be really good. So if you got time, go out and check it out. Sunday morning, we have prayer time at 9.30. Yeah. And I mean, first and foremost, I highly recommend that. You're missing a blessing. You're missing a good start to your day. You probably, as we'll talk about here in a minute, Jesus passes by sometimes at prayer time, and you might just need to get out of your tree and come on in. Anyhow, Sunday morning, Sunday school, 9.45, your prayer time. You might be a little late, but sometimes it rolls on over a little bit because the Holy Spirit rolls in. Like I said, I like to talk about that prayer time. I love it. You should not go. And when I started going, I realized what I'd been missing. Yeah. Worship service at 11 o'clock. Brother Joey, you people on the internet, I ain't the preacher. Joey Jessup, come hear him. He does a great job. He's Holy Spirit filled, I'm telling you. Yeah. Come hear him. Um, that being said, anybody got any other announcements? I know I've missed something, I'm sure. So I don't have nothing rubbed down in front of me. So any other announcements?
I've seen. Uh, Y'all remember them people? Remember this one? Uh -uh. WMU meeting. WMU meeting. Monday at 11 o'clock. All you women come out of can. So, all right. Got to hit on announcements anymore? Anything? Homecoming, first Sunday in October. Homecoming, o first Sunday in October. October. I know we ain't having service. We're having blood service, correct? Well, we're going to have I service. I mean, we ain't having no Sunday school. No Sunday school. We haven't seen. Y'all know what I mean. Yeah, start, start the service in the Saints. We're at 10 o'clock. And then when we're finished, we'll go down and share our cup and dish meal together. Got to write these announcement things down, don't you? You know, you, you, you hear it every Sunday, and you still can't say it. Now, if I was talking to Marty out here, oh, I'd say, no, no, we have no Sunday school. Uh, so, anyhow, come to homecoming. I'm sure we'll bring something deep. Be good. We highly, highly recommend you people on the internet that watch us every week come eat with us. <laughs> you know, come eat with us, right? So I won't say nothing about that. I'll leave them. I'll leave y'all alone tonight. Anyhow, any more prayer requests? Remember this one? Y'all remember the guy, he was a bully, and I don't know his first name, but I got a phone call from They're all our friends that he was in a car wreck, and the car was on fire, and a man stopped and tried to get him to get out, and he told him he couldn't, and that man went somewhere to get something to try to get him out, and when he come back, he said he was charred to burn. The car had burned completely up. Mm -hmm. Remember this one. <clears throat> Me and Phyllis had another death in our family. Our cousin, uh, Lucille, went on pastoral trip today. We also had, remember everybody on the prayer list? I mean, it's on the back of a bulletin. Glad Sandy's doing better. She's got bronchitis, but they will be here tonight. Maybe. We pray for her. Phyllis was telling me of a couple. Phyllis says she's going to be my new secretary. Oh. <laughs> y'all just, whatever she charges, y'all pay it, okay? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She'd be good. Anyway, one. Uh, Betty Cox called her. She was just rejoicing and crying and praying all the way home from the doctor's office. So Amen. Great, great news. And I don't know what it is, but it's great. Amen. And uh, then Connie called her and said that uh, a member of their family, her brother in law, passed away. Mm. I know it was good to see JD and Marla here Sunday. Yes, Man, that was a blessing. That just done my heart well. I, man, you can't help but. Think about them all the time. I mean, I think about everybody. But something about them, I just feel for them. So y'all remember them in prayer. Remember my mom. Remember, you know, all the churches is around. You know, remember them. And, you know, a lot of those are hurting and need. You know, so remember me. Uh, I'm gonna be gone for a little bit. Uh, I'm gonna go help a church out. I ain't got a preacher needing help, and um, I'm gonna go help them. Amen. I'm not gonna preach. That's what I'm gonna do. But they need preaching. They ain't had no preaching. People's leaving, and you need a preacher. You need a preacher. And I, I desire y'all's prayers. Y'all my Antioch. As I was telling Joey earlier, uh, Paul always come back and praise God for the things that he'd seen, the things that he'd done, the things that had been going on in his life. Now I'm no Paul, except for one. We have one comparison. That's we sinners saved by the grace of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Other than that, <laughs> I ain't can compare to that man. And. Uh, but, you know, even, even like I told Joe, even if Joe Jessup wasn't here, this is still my church. Amen. You know what I mean? Amen. So I desire your prayers. Uh, I know this church prays, so I never had to worry about that. Anytime I've been anywhere, I've, I've known that I've been prayed for. Yeah. I mean, and, and that's a great thing. That's what churches need today. There's so many unpraying churches, and that's what their problem is. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They're not praying. Mm -hmm. They're not seeking God's will. You know what I mean? So y'all pray for me. Because Lord knows I'm going to need it. But I'm going to tell you, uh, and I'm going to go ahead and share it right here, right now. Uh, you know, I was real faithful to something this weekend. Uh, my, my pride, my flesh, I know I raced for a long time. They wanted me to come to the racetrack this weekend. Uh, I'd been gone preaching for a couple weeks, I know that. This weekend, this weekend, uh, this Sunday, we were, you know, deciding who Sunday school teacher was. And, and pray for your Sunday school teacher. Amen. They're going to need it. Amen. Pray for the new ones, the ones that's in new positions. Yeah. They're going to need it. And, you know, pray for yourself to have an open mind and an open heart and be willing to hear God's word and, uh, you know, serve the Lord in what you do in Sunday school. It's important, I believe. 
uh, Sunday school busted my heart, man. We had a we had a great one Sunday, didn't we? I mean, I mean, we just had a Holy Spirit fell on the class, man. We just had a wonderful time. Um, so Sunday school's work good start, you know. You you're not coming to Sunday school, internet. I said, I'm gonna be gone. Man, you're missing out. Anyhow, so I was supposed to go. They wanted me to come to Darlington. They wanted me to Kyle Petty invited me. I worked for Adam Petty 20 years ago. I was, you know, y'all think I know y'all thinking he couldn't be because he's only 20 something. But anyhow, <laughs> 20 years ago. Uh, uh, I worked for Adam, and he got killed in, in, a, in a racing accident. And, uh, um, you know, I, Lord told me to preach back in February. Y'all know that, man. I mean, my life's been uh, totally turned uh, right side Amen. up. I'm not going to say upside down. I'm going to say right side up. Amen. 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 You serve the Lord, your life will turn right side up. It's upside down if you right. ain't. That's right. That's right. Uh, so anyhow, I said, you know, I, I'm not going to do it. I mean, I, I was like, I can't do it. I told him, I said, I've been called to preach. I said, I've been preaching the last two Sundays. I've been out of my church, and I'm going to be at my church Sunday because I'm going to tell y'all what I've done all my life. Now, y'all heard me say I've been the biggest hypocrite there ever was, but I wasn't a hypocrite this time. I told you to be in church. Quit forsaking the gathering together. Hey, man, I didn't say it. I came home to church. I said, I ain't going to do it. I said, I can't come. I told him, I said, I've been called to preach. I'm going to church. And he's like, wow. I'm sure they were just shocked. I mean, they knew me. And I was like, well, we were eating down here at Limpton. My phone rings. It was Kyle Bear. And I tell you this because I want to show you how the Lord works in your life. There may be something in your life that the Lord is speak to you that makes you chest by life and feel great about yourself. Hey, honey, it ain't nothing no better than Jesus Christ patting you on the back. Amen. 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 Well, I said, no, I ain't going. You know, so, and we had the Holy Spirit filled Sunday school class that morning. I believe that was for a reason, too, because I believe the Lord knows what's getting ready to happen. We down there, he calls and, and says, man, you know, they message. I called him right back because I was like, wow. And he said, man, I want you to know that's the greatest thing I've ever heard. It blessed my soul. I, I, I mean, I thought, I'm sorry I couldn't be there, but I got a circle. He said, no, no. He said, absolutely not. He said, that's the greatest thing I've ever heard. He said, and he's like, you know, can I call you this week? I need to talk to you. I don't know what he needs to talk about. He ain't called me. But, he, but you know, and that made me feel so good, better than, I, I, I can promise you, when you serve the Lord and the Lord gives you a little slap on the back, Hey, you'll feel better than you felt doing anything that ever was that this world could offer. Amen. Right. So I did that. So the other day they called me. You know, because I mean, I pray all the time, Lord. You know, when you get called to do something, you get called to preach. You want to preach. I want to preach. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? May not be no good, but that's what I want to do. Hey, you get called to teach. You want to teach. Yeah. Right, Donna? You get called to sing, you'll sing, don't you, Ashley? That's right. You do. You get called to sit on a pew and say amen. I believe that's a calling right there. Amen. <laughs> Then say amen. I get called and they say, you know, I, and you get discouraged, you know. I get to go to and I'm like, man, I'm going to preach. You know, I've been called to preach. Lord, do you want me to preach? Every time I get a few weeks in between, I'm thinking, well, I guess it was me that was wanting to do it. You know what I mean? That's probably easy to do. I mean, Johnny, right. him, right. Joey, I mean, you, you know, you probably remember those days, you know. It's easy to do. Yeah. Uh, so I get a call and they want me to come for the month of September and help them out. You know, they had a preacher. Oh, the preacher got sick. He was, you know, uh, had to resign. And then it's Oak Grove up here in Cana, up Ward's Gap. So it was in Virginia, but they got a Cana address, but Ward's Gap Road, I guess. So, uh, you know, I, I just think that was the Lord. Uh, I done, he, he gave me a test. Yeah. Have you passed any tests lately? <laughs> Every day could be a test to you. And you want to do something in this church for the Lord? <laughs> Maybe you ought to do something for the Lord. Amen. Amen. That's the truth, though. With that being said, I just wanted to share that because I desire your prayers. Amen. Every day, all day, when you think of me, pray for me. And I pray for y'all. But, you know, I mean, I just pray that the Holy Spirit keeps doing what he's doing in this church. I mean, Amen. I, I don't know if y'all look around on Sundays, but, man, the church is growing. Yeah. You know, I pray that the devil stays out of here, too. Amen. 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 And I pray Jesus Christ rebukes him because I ain't got no power to kick him around. I can tell you that. But I know one it does, and that's Jesus Christ. I hear people say that all the time. I'm going to take on devil hunting. <laughs> Jesus Christ wanted to rebuke Satan. Yeah. That's not, you know, that's what, what Michael has said, you know, uh, Jesus Christ rebuked thee. I mean, wouldn't me? I'm not going to do it. I hear people say it all the time. I've been seeing some, and I'm not putting no denomination down, man. They go, they go against the devil and go cast out. Things. I say all kinds of things. <laughs> yeah. No, you know. It's all behind Jesus Christ, and that's what it needs to be. And this church does that. Everything's about Jesus Christ, and I appreciate y'all. I'm going to brag on you a little bit, and I'll move on. Anyhow, remember the prayers that's been mentioned that people requested tonight? Remember the uh, 
People on the internet, there's a lot of people on the internet. I believe there's a lot of people out there on the internet. You're watching right now, I believe you won't come to church. I believe you are. There's something keeping you away. We're praying for you. I believe, I, I mean, we pray for that. We pray for the people on the internet. Hey, look, I go on the internet. I, I've been going on there and looking to see where people's watching from. It amazes me. Now, go ahead and check. Let me all check that out. Now, I realize, you know, you know if I know you live right down the road right here and you're watching me. <laughs> I ain't talking about you. You need to be in church. That's right. You're living right down that road right there. If you're living in Holly Springs off Peel Road, you need to be in church. Oh, sorry, Kevin, you're here. <laughs> Anyhow, Kevin's, Kevin's got a testimony about that. That's the reason why I pick on him. If you were out here in this neighborhood, get to church. Now, I'm not going to back off that because I believe that's a commandment of God. Amen. But now, I do realize that some people may not be able to find that in some places I see where they're at. I've traveled this world, and there's some places. I mean, you ever been, anybody ever been out Wyoming, in Montana area out there? Man, they're 100 miles from the next person. That's right. They are. Maybe they ain't got a house of God like we got right here. Yeah. So I just noticed, man, there's people all over the place. And they, I mean, it's amazing. The other day I looked at it, it was like 80-some comments. They were not a one of them from North Carolina. I still believe if 80-some out of state's watching, I believe there's 80-some in North Carolina watching. I believe that. Yeah. So the church is growing. God's doing things. Uh, me and Marty had a talk the other day, you know, because I have a hard time. Because I, I know CM really well because I used it a lot of times to for my excuses. So. It's a good thing when we use things in the right way, they're good. When we use things in the right way, they're good. When you use things in the wrong way, they're bad. Notice I said you, yeah. not us. We're using it to try to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ to hurting souls out there to get them here. We're using it to those people out. Hey, there might be somebody right now we're going through that hurricane and can't do nothing. Sit down and watch us on their phone tonight. Uh -huh. Amen. Amen. Praise be to God that. But if you're sitting out here into a house eating a hot fudge cake watching it like I used to do, you're using it wrong. Amen. All right, I've been on enough. We didn't pray yet, so that's my intro. That's the announcements <laughs> for the day and the prayer request. So uh, it's good to have any vision we have. I got some good friends here tonight that I, that I think dearly of. Uh, uh, went to church with them all my life. They've been uh, inspirations to me. They taught me in Sunday school. They taught me with one of the RAs and a little boy and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, I'm not much, but what little bit I am, you had a great party. And I really love you and I appreciate you. It's good to see you tonight. So, Brother Donny Isaac, if you would, would you lead us to the Lord in prayer? Sure. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day and we thank you for this opportunity to come and, and worship you. We pray that you speak with Chris as he ministers to us and to uh, guide him and direct him in everything he does, goes about doing from this time forward. We, we thank you for his life. We thank you for what, what he means to us. And we thank you for what he means to this church. And I'm sure that uh, everybody would agree with that. Continue to uh, look after him. You know, just bless him. And continue to uh, uh, work in his life. And we pray just uh, He'd uh, find a church and find what he needs, and uh, I'm, I'm convinced that you'll uh, you'll guide him in that direction. We pray to be the service tonight that you uh, bless each one of us. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 So, anyhow, they know I talk real fast, so they used to it. They've got used to it too. They used to it now. They speak Chris and these. Uh, some people ain't even learning still. Anyhow, does anybody remember the last time I preached here? It's been three months, I guess. Maybe. Remember what we talked about? Stones. Huh? Stones. I don't know. Never mind. You're right. The stones. I mean, we talked about that. Peter. We just followed Peter around. Well, I mean, all weekend, I got so many things I want to preach about from Jonah and the storm. I mean, you know, the storm going on. I had a good old Jonah storm message, the Lord said. It. I mean, I, I really preach that. I like that. And, came on. and then, of course, I was, you know, and he's like, no, you got to go back and follow Peter around again. Man, I'm fine now. You follow Peter around. You're fine. You want something to teach in Sunday school? You Sunday school teachers? You know, you don't follow Peter around for a while. <laughs> You'll find everything's going on in your life. Yeah. Good and bad. But follow Peter around a little bit. So we followed Peter around. You remember when we followed Peter last time? Uh, he'd been sitting by the fire of the world. You know, he sat down by the fire of all them people and started denying Christ. And we talked about what happened. He sat around with, you know, the fire of the world. He sat around, sat around that campfire with all these people of the world. You'll start acting like people of the world. Right, right. Amen. You will. You'll start doing it. You say, no, I won't do that. Yeah, 
Peter said he wasn't either, didn't he? He'd done it three times. Last time he even done it kind of cut, you know, he said, you know, he was cursing, you know. I mean, I believe he was, hey, keep hanging out with people like that. You'll start talking like them. You'll start acting like them. Right, right. They will influence your life. Amen. We found out that when he realized what he had done, that he, would be, he went back to work hanging out with them Christian people on that boat. The place where he found Jesus. Yeah. You know, where, where are you at tonight? I believe if you're looking for a place you found Jesus, most people I know. No, I, I, I realize you may get saved. You may got saved out here. <clears throat> you may got to say that. You may have. But something about God's house. Amen. There's something about God's house. Yeah, right. You know what I mean? And Peter went back there with the people he knew that served God. You know what I mean? Hey, I'm happy tonight. I come in here and I smile. I'm smiling because I know I'm with a bunch of people who serve God. Amen. Amen. You know, I, I tell you one reason. I know you serve God. You're here on a Wednesday night. That's right. Amen. That's right. Not just a Sunday morning at 11 o'clock. Hush. I ain't gonna hear that, do you? It's our truth, because I did it. And I wasn't serving God when I lived that way. Amen. Amen. Yeah. I was. Yeah. Well, I believed in him. But let me tell you, there's a big difference between serving and believing. Yeah. You don't find, you don't believe that, we're getting ready to find out. Peter, we know believed in Jesus. But he wasn't serving. But I'm gonna tell you what, he comes a mighty man when he stands up with them 11 and sort of sitting down around the fire. Yeah. So anyhow, if you want to turn to Acts. Uh, chapter 2, probably chapter 1. We got, yeah, chapter 1, because I got some 2 and 1. Um, my head got somewhere, and it feels like it's peeling off up here. I got to start wearing a hat. I think I got hair, but I don't. <laughs> in denial still. You think I've been over it by now? <laughs> kind of like the old thing. I'm in denial over that. Uh, anyhow, Acts chapter 1. We're going to start right here. Let's start right here. Chapter 1, verse 13. We're going to pick up Peter. Right? Let's bring you up the date. Peter and them, Jesus had ascended. You know, they all was on, you know, Mount Colorado. They were all over there. And Jesus had a, you know, he's going to send him to heaven. And they're going back to the, to the house. I believe this is probably the house where they had the Lord's Supper. I don't know. You know, there's a lot of speculation about the house. You know, it says, well, Peter and John abode. Uh, you know, Peter and John had been said where they abode. I'm just going to say it must have been where they were staying. But surely the goodness, Peter and John was there at the ascension. You know what I mean? I ain't really, I, I think that's the, you know, I believe they were. And I'm sure they were. But anyhow, I see his disciples. I believe, it was, I believe that would have, he would have been something said about that. Because Peter done been restored. You know, he done dragged that, drug that net up in fish. and done had supper with Jesus on the beach there. You know, they done, you know, had a personal relationship going again. He done told him to feed the sheep. He done restored him. So Peter now, same guy. To sit around with the world and start acting like him. Notice he's hanging out with Christians now. <laughs> Who are you hanging out with? Yeah. I mean, I'm going to beat that in because I hung out with some bad people all my life. You know what I mean? And they affected my living. So Peter, he's hanging out with Christians now. In 7 Acts 13, it says, uh, And when they were coming to, when they were coming into in the, let me move my book on and when they were come in, they went up into an upper room where both, both Peter and James and John and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew, Matthew, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Simon, Zeliot, I can't ever say it right, I know I said that wrong, and Judas, the brother of James. These all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, with his brother. The last time Mary mentioned in the Bible, by the way, just so you know. Sorry, Pope. Sorry. Last time we see her, I guess she's doing some Catholic stuff. I don't know. I'm not here to talk about him, but it's the last time she's mentioned. Yeah. Ain't the last time a women's mentioned, though. Said they was praying with the women. You know, I've been to some churches, and I'm going to talk about this a minute, because, you know, my Sunday school class knows now, I support women in my Sunday school class. I support the women in this church. Amen. You think I don't want Donna praying for me? My goodness, you ought to hurt her teeth. You ain't got no authority over no man, eh? That's what it says. Don't say she can't pray. That's right. Hey, right. man. You're right. Man. It don't say she can't pray. She says, don't usurp authority over the man. She ain't got no authority over nobody. I tell what she does. She tells people about Jesus Christ, loves Amen. and prays for, and Amen. things happen when she prays. I guarantee you. Amen. Probably things don't happen. People got an attitude to be like, well, she can't pray for me. Well, Jesus says, well, don't even talk to me either then. Probably. 
I don't know. That's my thinking on it. Quit putting the women down in the church. I'm sick of it. Don't, go, don't leave here and say I'm some kind of liberal that's letting women, letting Beth Morris out and get up here and preach. No, I didn't say that. But putting your foot on them and not letting them do nothing in the house of God's most ridiculous thing ever seen. Because they're right there with them. Right. Amen. Amen. Now, I mean, it's the truth. Yeah. You, you dread singing, don't you? Now, I know this church. I ain't seen this church, does it? I'm talking to the internet. You got to take a camera off me and I'll start talking to y'all. I feel like we've got a big audience because I've been seeing who I was listening. Women were very important in the church. Amen. Ask Paul. No, they weren't preacher. No, they weren't the deacon. <laughs> but I'm going to tell you what, they probably sure was glad they happened. I mean, Paul had to be like, you can take this letter because he gave it to a man. He probably stopped a long way and hung all around and Spilled something on it and messed it up. You know what I mean? Women, I mean, they take care of things in the church. And I appreciate you women, folks. I think they did here, too. I just want to say that because, it's, you know, I don't think you would mention that if it wasn't important to talk about the women in the church. Why did he say and with the women? Yeah. Why did he say that? Because the women meant something in the church. These old timey don't mean nothing. I'm old timey as they come. Y'all know that. I mean, I dressed casual tonight to show you how modern and liberal I got. I didn't like that. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all know how I am about dressing. I'm old time, but I'm not stupid. I read the Bible with a seat. You know what I mean? Amen. I appreciate you, man. Now, we're going to move on. <clears throat> they were one accord in prayer and supplication. You want me to tell you what? If you're not coming to prayer service, there may be some of you in here not coming to that. I don't know. I, I don't look. You know why? Because I'm too busy at the altar. Listen to that verse. Let me tell you what one accord prayer it is. Now, I ain't saying that everybody can't just be a babbling along and talking. Hey, honey, it confuses me sometimes. Yeah. I tell you what one accord pray to you, Johnny. You agree with me on this right here. When you say, brother, I pray for brother Charlie over there. And I say, hey, man, brother Charlie, lift yeah. him up, hey, man. When, you know, that's one accord praying yeah. right there. That's what one accord praying. One accord praying ain't a bunch of everybody praying for you praying for the adult over here, you praying for the hospital over here, you praying for the schoolhouse all at the same time. How's that one accord? You're right. It ain't. Right. They were in one accord with what they thought. If you don't believe it, check out the rest of the Bible when they pray for. How about over a few more chapters when they pray for boldness to spread God's word? Yeah. Right. They were in one accord again. I believe when we pray here, now I'm not saying you can't pray out loud when somebody else is praying. You didn't listen to what I said. You didn't. I didn't say that. I said you're in agreement with them. Yeah. You're in agreement with them. If not, how are you going to go with me? Charlie, just read. We ain't going to go with Charlie. You're talking about something else. I'm not talking about something else. You do get talking to a lot of yourself in the front row. I'm understanding that. And I keep looking at you, too. I don't know what it is. Joey pulls my ears off my head every Sunday. Y'all not understand. Sometimes you're on the front row. You get talked to on the front row. I guess that's where you're at. Uh, but that's one important prayer. That's what these people were doing. They were praying one accord for what? I, I tell you what they probably praying for. The Holy Spirit and the will of God. Amen. 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 What happens over here in a little bit? The Holy Spirit shakes that house. Yeah. Right. How many Amen. times? I, I mean, I hear that's what we pray here all the time. I hear I'm bragging on the church. Yeah. I hear, Lord, let the Holy Spirit come in this service again. Lord, let the Holy Spirit come. You know, I hear it all the time. And everybody's agreeing. And you know what? We've had some Holy Spirit filled services. Amen. Amen. Going. Right. I'm going to tell you what, when you Amen. get away from that one accord praying, you'll get away from all the rest of it. Too. You'll get away from the Holy Spirit. You'll get away from the church growing. Amen. That's what they're doing right here. Verse 15. And in these days, Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples and said, The name of names together were about 120. You know, we always think it's 12. You know. Growing up, I, I, I always thought there was 12. Yeah, it is 12 feet. You know, if you'll read all the Bible, Jesus had the whole pile of people following. You know what yeah. I mean? He had, he had disciples. It's 12 apostles. They called the Jesus himself. You know what I mean? But disciples is followers. We're disciples of Christ. Yeah. You know what I mean? So there's 12 apostles. But there, there's 120 people. I mean, this is, you know, and they're praying on one accord. You know, I ain't counted it. You know, taking a bottle. I, I, I think we, we, we've gone a bit over 100 here, time two, and we're getting close to I think that 120, and, and I, I mean, I ain't saying 52 more guys there in my name. You know, things can happen, but I just think, man, 
You know, that's, my, that's just that number that centers my head. Every time I start taking them off and I count people, I think of that all the time. You know what I mean? So uh, it has no meaning. just wanted to say that. Sometimes I say things just because. Man and brethren, the scripture must needs have been fulfilled, which the Holy Ghost, uh, which the Holy Ghost, by the mouth of David, spake before concerning Judas, which was guide to them that took Jesus. You know, this is the same guy that denied Jesus Christ. All of a sudden, he stood up and he sat down no more. You want to stand? Serve the Lord. See God. Amen. I tell you, teaching changed my life. It did. Yeah. Preaching ain't changed. Preaching's turned it up right side up, like I said. But teaching changed my life because it made me, made me have to study my word. Lord, yep. changed your life, didn't it? Amen. Amen. Yeah. Turns you, turns you, made you, made you have to start being accountable. You can't, you know, because people right. watching right. you now. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I, you know, we're getting ready to start new, new, new uh, I guess we call it year. We start in October in Southern Baptist Church, right? I don't know how other churches do it. I don't know how this church does it. I don't know how churches have come out of it. Done it. They start in October. And I know we just vote in some teachers. So I'm going to share something. I shared with these guys right here this week because I'm thinking about Peter standing up right here and starting to teach. And I, and I, and I, want, and I want to touch on this right here. Man, if I turn 2 Timothy 2, 116. I thought I was going to preach on Zach because I got a big note right here about Zach. I cannot get it to connect over there. Ain't that what I'm going to do? I mean, he's going to pick the top. Y'all might hear about the trees. That'd be for somebody else, I reckon. Uh, <laughs> I get, uh, what do you say? Second Timothy chapter 2. This is the pastoral epistle. Before you tell me, I know he's talking to Timothy. But there's some key words in this right here. And I'll tell you another one over, and y'all put your finger on it over in Hebrews 13, 7, 17. Y'all know what that said, because we read something. But let's read right here. Uh, and these things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Uh-oh. I believe we just had teachers in there. Joy. Preaches what he told him to do, put them in remembrance. You know what Peter's doing right now? Peter, Peter had to get marked to write down the book of Mark. It's, it's Peter's story, by the way. Yeah. Peter couldn't write. I mean, he may have wrote. I don't know how educated the man was, but apparently not very educated. He was a fisherman. I ain't sitting there uneducated. I'm just saying that's what he was, and he probably was like me. I like to go fishing, I go to school. You know what I'm saying? I mean, he probably was. Peter. Started remembering. Tell you what, teacher. Remember what you've been taught. Yeah. Don't put your opinion in. Yeah. Remember what you've heard out of old bitch. God don't need your opinion. Yeah. Right. God don't need mine. And I like to give it. But he don't need it. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm guilty of it. Like I told you, I'll start preaching every time. I, I can't teach a Sunday school class. I'd end up on my knees repenting for everything I'm going to teach. I'm like, Lord, have mercy, you know, on me, right? You know, if you don't have that attitude as a teacher, I'm not going to check yourself. You're right. Amen. The Bible says Amen. poor in spirit. You know what poor in spirit is? Realize that, that you get your spirit. You, you're just a bankrupt sinner, and you need a loan from Jesus Christ. Yeah. That's right. That's what it means. You're poor in spirit. You know, you should, a Holy Spirit, you know, that can afford the Bible, right? You should never feel. If you do, there's a problem because, I mean, my Bible tells me I sin every day. My Bible tells me all oh, I sin and you know, come short of glory of God. I mean, now, I'm not saying they give us the right sin. I, I, I preach best on that. We're not going to get on that because I'm talking to teachers right now. It says down here, we could read on a little bit more. Um, let's just read this. I, got, I was going to jump down to 13, 14. Let's read it starting in 2 there. We just read, uh, who shall be able to teach others also. Thou, therefore, endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warreth entangle himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. We must want to please Jesus Christ. He can want to chose him. Yeah. If, please, if God didn't choose you to teach, quit before I tell you to. Don't nobody want you to do what you want to do. Huh? 
Hey, Josh. Why don't you pray about it before you come? I'm sure you did. It's been taking a while now. I'm sure did. God chose you. Yeah. Amen. 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 God ain't chose you. Who else to be with? I'm not a Marty because Marty been here teaching for a long time. He knows what I'm talking about. God ain't chose you to do something. I'm doing it. Yeah. Now, I always want to do a lot of things in church. Thank God God didn't let me do them because what I wanted to do, you know what I mean? Uh, I never wanted to preach. <laughs> I never wanted to do that. <laughs> You know, it's you do things you don't want to do, things you want to do, be careful and you don't get to you know what I mean? So, anyhow, be a good soldier. Be sure you're called to be that soldier. Yeah. You know what I mean? If not, don't do what you want to do. Thou therefore endure hearts heart as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Uh, jump down to five and read that again. Um, and if a man who also strives for mastery yet is not crowned, except he strive lawfully, um, the husbandman, that's a worker. Like a farmer, that's what that was in that day. The laborer, that laborer must be the first partaker of the fruits. Consider what I say, and the Lord give thee understanding in all things. Hey, we know it's the Holy Spirit that giveth understanding. Right, right. I mean, people say, I don't understand the Bible. Maybe you got the Holy Spirit. Of course, everybody said, I can't understand the Bible. <laughs> Man, you won't get on it. Y'all all know the truth, though, but you know if you read one of them, whatever. You say you can't understand that. Somebody tell me one time. I didn't stand down there in church. We went to church together. Told me they couldn't understand the King James Bible. I believe it's the Bible for the English speaking world. You know what I'm saying? I read it. The Bible for the English. I believe that. Amen. They said, I can't understand the Bible. I go to the Ten Commandments. Don't I said, you understand that? I said, oh, Lord, yeah, that's the Ten Commandments. I thought she just couldn't understand the King James Bible. Well, I don't understand. I, I, I'm here, I got a script over here that I'm reading. It's got some two names in it. And I'm going to have to call them Bill and Jack. And guess what? Them same names as in the other Bibles. And I still had to call Bill and Jack because I couldn't pronounce them without some Greek. You know what I mean? Yeah. Quit making excuses for things that's going on that's wrong in your life. And I said it's wrong, and I believe it's wrong, and I ain't backing off of it. If you disagree with me, ain't the first time you've been wrong. I promise you that. Anyway, anyhow, wherein I suffer trouble, it says, consider, uh, remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel. For, Verse 9, wherein I suffer trouble as an evildoer, even unto the bonds, but the word of God is not bound. Therefore I endure all things for the elect's sake, that they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. It is faith in the faithful saying. For if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. If we if Amen. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, we also he will also deny us. If we believe not. Yet he abides faithful, he cannot deny himself. I tell you what that means right there. A lot of people won't tell me. I tell you what that means right there. You don't believe in him. He's going to be faithful to judge you just like he said he was going to do. Amen. 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 It's Jesus or no way. And I promise you that there ain't no other way than Jesus Christ Amen. is your Lord and Savior. And if you don't believe that, he's going to be just as faithful to judge you. Amen. And I tell you what that's going to bring. And I have going to bring hell for what that's going to bring. Plain and simple for you. Amen. You think a storm is bad right now on the street? Won't be nothing. You'll be begging to be in a flood. <clears throat> of these things, verse 14, of these things, put them in remembrance, charging them before the Lord that they strive not about words to profit, but to the subverting of the hearers. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, but shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. Hey, I'm guilty of that. Yeah. I'm guilty. He says stick to the gospel. Yeah. And anything else is in vain. We can sit here and argue about it. Right. We can argue about that Bible. We can argue about, you know, we can argue about whether or not the praying thing. We can argue about a lot of things, but I'm going to tell you what we need to be concentrating on. Getting souls saved. Amen. 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 Getting so saved and telling them about Jesus Christ that died on the cross for a sinner, no matter how bad, no matter how dirty they was, as Joey always says, from the guttermost to the uttermost, it don't matter. Jesus Christ saves, and that's what you need to be teaching. Amen. Amen. You're right. That's what you need to be preaching. Yeah. That's what you need to be witnessing out here in the world. And I'm guilty of what I mean, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm guilty of it. I'm guilty of, uh, uh, of getting a I, I, I mean, I, I really have to concentrate on that. I have to have, well, you know, I'm not asking for some forgiveness. Hey, when you read the Bible, 
It don't convict your heart. I don't care how long you've been a Christian. It don't convict your heart. It's a problem. You're There's a problem right. in your life. Amen. We get it right. Amen. But quit arguing over things that don't matter. He's especially talking to teachers. You know, I'm sure. Lord knows I say everything everybody gets free with the night. I'm sure. But I try to back it up with the Bible. If it backs up with the Bible, hey, I don't care if you disagree with it or not. That's right. Be sure you back it up with the Word of God. Amen. If you back it up with the Word of God, like I said, they disagree all they want to do. It won't be the first time they've been wrong. Uh, you know, it's just a trick. Amen. But don't spend time arguing about it. Right. Move on. Yeah. Move on. Get back to Jesus. Because, you know, there could be needing something out of Jesus that day that we didn't see. And we get to arguing about what they're upset about. They're having a bad day. Those things those in the Bible just turn into a whole lot more things than people thought they were true. So, so this boy knows his teachers. And you're going to have to disagree with, you know, you probably, and sometimes you're going to be wrong and you're going to be great. There's been many times I know I, I've come in uh, before and I have to say, well, you know, I, I, I got to do something. I was wrong about this. I was wrong about that. You know, you do a little bit. You know why? Because studies show that self approval. The more you study, sometimes God will reveal different things to you. Right. Maybe. How do you think preachers keep preaching the same old Bible all the time? For this many years, and they can preach. Everybody get up here and preach this message, preach it different. Yeah. And then you go back and read it again, come back next week, you preach it different. Maybe. Study. Study the Word of God if you're going to teach, yeah. if you're going to be a worker for God. If not, you got to want to step down. And I'm just telling you, but I love this church. Amen. Amen. I love this church. I love each and every one of them. Amen. And you know, it's in the Word of God, and I'm going to preach it. Right. You've been called, do what God's called you. Don't, if you don't do what God's called to you to do, I, I might end up over here in John 4 a bit already. Don't do what God called you to do. There'll be storms in your life. Right. Come on over there to John Amen. chapter 2. I Amen. tell you what happened. He didn't do what God told him to do. God called him to do something. Say, so, look, hey, hey, God's called you to do something. He's made a way. It ain't too late yet. Right, you're right. I promise you that. You may say, well, they've done, done this, they've done, done that. You might be surprised if you say, God you know, told me to do something I didn't do with what right. might happen. Amen. But if you don't do what God told you to do, like I told you when I went when God was working on me and called me to preach, I went to drive my river down here because I was afraid they don't get eaten for something to spit out up here. You know what I mean? But there, God caused a storm in that man's life. He was in the bottom of that boat hiding down there from God. The storm was a raging. You know why storms is in your life? I ain't even got nothing that wrote down. But you read really book over John chapter 2 right now. Read that. There was a storm going on. Everybody knows that story. You learned when he was two. About Jonah and the way. And there was a storm going on, and he was in the bottom of the boat, and they all come down there and wanted to, you know, what have you done? You know, and he's like, I fear the Lord thy God, you know, and I ain't doing what he said, but he admitted it. You know, he admitted it. He still didn't do it. And I'm going to tell you something, you live like that right there, you live in a stormy time in your life. Right. You wonder why bad things happen? I'll tell you why bad things happen. Might be the way you live. Yeah, amen. 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 Maybe the way you live in. We live the way you are, you might not might see some sunshine every now and again. You say, well, I had somebody ask me, say, well, do you think, <laughs> and I'm going to get into all that, if you think sickness comes from sin? Jesus told that man, when he healed him, I'll forgive you your sins. And he said, well, you say that, didn't you? But I asked you this. What's the result of sin? What's the result of sin? What did you sin is death. The result of sin is death, ain't it? Right. My mom died of cancer right now. And she's probably going to die. Hey, man, it's the truth. It's life. we all going to die. Yeah. Now, why is she dying? Because sin was brought into this world by one man, Adam. Yeah. And the result of his death, and now our bodies die. So, when you get old, and you get sick, I'm sorry to tell you, that's the result of sin. I ain't saying you live in a sinful life, but you'll die by the result of sin. So, yes, sin goes to sin. Amen. 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 It does. Anyhow. Said down here in verse 17 and 18. This is those two people I can't even pronounce. And their word will eat as doth. Talking about the pro profane and vain Bible, these two people were having this going on. And their word will eat as doth a canker, of whom is Hymenus and Philetus, Bill and Jack, who concerning the truth have, have erred, saying that the resurrection is past already, and they overthrow the faith of some. You know what you'll cause people to do if you don't teach what's in this Bible? Call them to believe church. You will. That's right. And here's what 
what happens when that happens. And I know he's talking about but he said teach. Teach people to teach. Joey teaches us to do things. We looked at his word. We've listened to preaching all our life, maybe. Some of us maybe not. But anyhow, you've been listening to preaching. You hear God's word. You study God's word. You've been appointed to teach. Hebrews chapter 13. Here's what happened. Now remember this. You just, you just uh, uh, cause some to look, you know, you cause some to go away from the faith. It says right there, and overthrow the faith of the Son, the obeying and profane matters. Now this again is talking to the Bible. But I want you to listen to the key word in this front here. I believe the Bible applies. Verse 7. Remember them which have the rule over you, who have spoken unto you the word of God, whose faith follow, considering the end of their conversation. Now he's talking about the pastor. The pastor has the rule over this church. He delivers the word of God to you. So obviously that's not the president of the United States, but you have to deliver the word of God. He's talking about pastor. He's talking about the leader of the church. Who he's talking about right there. You follow his faith. You follow him. Teachers, follow him. Do not give him no problems. You might disagree with him. It said follow him in faith. Now, if he's given false doctrine, there's some scripture on that. Don't tell me, well, it's a false doctrine. He preaches Jesus Christ. He's preaching this word of God right here. Don't you grieve him? Because here's why. And this is what we had in Sunday school Sunday. I don't, you know, and, and it tied right in with this. Verse 17, Obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourselves, for they watch for the, your souls as they must give account that they may do it with joy and not with grief, for that is unprofitable to you. Read me preachers, my oak tree, don't blame God. Hey, you think that's crazy? That'd be pretty unprofitable, wouldn't it? Yeah. Dangerous to fall into the hands of, you know, the name of God. Yeah. He said it's unprofitable for you. But there's another key word and all that is in you. Who, uh, it says rule over you. Now we know it's talking about you, but it just said, who has spoken to you unto you the word of God? Now you are the teacher of a Sunday school class. They are in your Sunday school class. At that moment, whose Sunday school class is it? It's going to be better church, but we all know. We say, that's my wife, teacher. That's Marty's Sunday school class. I mean, if you don't believe it, think about it. Who's Sunday school class you go to? You go to Marty's? You go to Larry's? You go to Monty's? Which one do you go to? So, hey, must be their Sunday school class. If you eat it, and this is bad for the teacher, be careful. For you watch for their soul. And you will, as it says in 17, watch for your souls as they that must give account. Like I said, we talk to preachers, but you be careful. The Bible says you call one to stone. You'll build a storm around your neck. Right. Don't shove into another ocean, Amen. right? I believe that he's also addressing teachers right here because he said, though, we give you the word. Amen. We know who the one who rules over you. That's the pastor. We got that. But what about teaching the word? You're teaching the word of God. You give an account for those people you're teaching. That's right. Amen. You teach them wrong. You steer them wrong. You call them into the faith. Yeah. Boy, these days, you know, like everybody, <laughs> people you say, well, when you stand before God, you can't say, Donald made me do it. You can't say, well, I did it because Charlie did it. I did it because Caleb did it. I did it because, you, you can't say that. We know you can't say that. But whoa, right here, teacher. <laughs> there might be one that sat there and said, and God be like, well, he did, did he? Be careful when you say that. Be careful, teacher. I'm just giving you that right there. That turned out to be more than what it was going to be. But October's coming up. You're getting ready to start a new scene. You've got people getting ready to teach. Be careful. You're accountable for those you're teaching. Amen. Amen. And don't grieve the preacher. <laughs> it's unprofitable for you. Amen. Think about it before you do it. Back to Acts. Man, I so don't preach on Zacchaeus. <laughs> hey, you know, I got a whole pile over here. Look right over here. Look right. I mean, got the whole thing on Zacchaeus right there. Look at that. I ain't even got to go to that. Amen. It's whatever the Holy Spirit has. Amen. That's right. That's what it should be. Whatever Amen. the Holy Spirit got right. you, that's what you do. Right. We'll never question it. It says down here in verse 20. Now, now Peter done, you know, he, he, he done stood up. He ain't sitting by the fire no more in the world. He stood out now. He's a teacher. 
You know what I mean? He's the teacher. He's going to, I, I mean, he's teaching right now. I see the difference. We got Pentecost yet. He's teaching. He's saying things. He's been put into remembrance. He's teaching. He's right here. He's talking about getting somebody else, you know, from, uh, as a solid missing one. He said in verse 20, for it is written in the book of Psalms, <laughs> lest his habitation be desolate and let no man dwell therein, and his bishopric let another take. He's talking about Judas. I find it odd. I mean, Peter started to quote Psalms now. And I just don't see nowhere. I mean, Peter was not a learned man. Yeah. Study, he was. But then Paul, well, yeah, Paul be rolling now. <laughs> Peter wasn't a learned man. It says, and you can read on down here, you can read the rest of that. I'm going to jump down here. I'm not taking that out of context because, I mean, it's going on saying right here. For, for these men which have commanded, co covenanted with us all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us. Remember that. Kept company with them and the whole time he was with them. And all that time you're reading about Peter and James and John and all them traveling, these men were with them right here. Yeah. Okay. Beginning from the baptism of John until the same day that he was taken up from us, must one be ordained to be a witness for us of his resurrection. And they appointed to Joseph called uh, Bersabbas, who was surnamed Justice, and Matthias. And they prayed and said, Thou, Lord, which knowest the hearts of men, show whether of these two thou hast chosen, that he may take part of this ministry and apostleship, from which Judas, by transgression, fell, that he might go to his own place. And y'all don't go on Sunday school class, y'all done, because y'all done heard this. You ain't praying for what's going on in the church. Don't know. Yeah, you're right. Don't. Well, nobody care what you think. What God thinks. Yeah. The truth. If you wait for what I think, it'll be a mess. But I've been out many times. I can't have any times I voted when I ain't prayed about every other time, probably. Hey, man, I'm guilty. Before you vote on anything in this church, pray about it. You're right. Amen. You'll get the right man. You'll get the right thing. The right thing will happen. But if you don't pray about it and you give your opinion, it's probably wrong. You may get lucky to be right. Because you've been listening or something, I don't know. But you better pray about anything you do. Now, it's gone. Before you do it, before you vote. That's what they were doing, more or less. They were right there in the middle. They, they, they was having, and it said they prayed. And they gave forth their lots, and the lot fell upon Matthias, and he was numbered with the eleven. Man, you know, over in Matthew, uh, over in Luke, actually, chapter 12, you know, he goes up on the mountain. Prays about it, comes down, picks his 12 disciples. I believe on Matthias right here. I believe he's probably, I'm going to tell you, I, I love this guy. Because I'm going to tell you something. Maybe you ain't getting what you want in church. Maybe you ain't been asked to do something big. Maybe you ain't, you know, getting that big feeling you want. Matthias didn't either. He had to go the whole time with Jesus. And I saw Peter. We all know how Peter at. I'm sure he's struggling along. <laughs> Look at me. You know what I mean? John. I mean, he was the one he loved most. He probably had to kiss up to him like, mm, you know, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Hey, wait, 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 wait. They were human beings, man. Yeah. The Bible's real. They were some kind of fairy tale people that acted different. They acted just like me and you. Yeah. And you can learn a lot from them. I tell you what I believe. I believe the rest of them. We know Judas, he go around trying to figure out. He ain't everybody to leave so he can get the money. I mean, we know what they're all doing. Thomas didn't believe nothing. You know what I mean? He had, you know, I mean, they, they, they were a mess. You know what I mean? So many people called dirty dough. They were men. But I believe there was one. Matthews. Says that it said they were there from the beginning to the end, didn't yeah. it? Been out the whole time. Yeah. I believe every time, I believe when they come down, I believe Matthews was there that night. I believe when Jesus went up and prayed on that mountain, Matthews like, he's gonna keep me. Yeah. Man, he gonna keep me. Jesus come down. You want know me to tell you why Jesus didn't pick Matthews here? Matthews went dirty enough. <laughs> That's right, man. That's what he was doing, what he was supposed to be doing. And Jesus said, honey, I need you <laughs> being the backbone of them leaders, being the backbone of them teachers, being the backbone of the church. Maybe you don't get to do what you want to do because you're the backbone. Yeah, you're right. Amen. 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 Don't be wanting to do something that somebody else got. I, mean, I believe man. He was like, man, I want to do that someday. Oh, Lord, let me do that. He's like, well, it's okay. I bet you, you want me to tell you what I think Matthews did because he was still with him. I said, I bet Matthews went and prayed for them men. Yeah. I bet when he said, Peter chopped that ear, Peter that, like, I bet Matthews was hurt. I bet Matthews left that walking. 
They got, I know they probably didn't have one out there in the desert. They saw it. But I bet he was on them hands and knees. And I bet he was praying for them twins. I bet it broke Matthew's Matthew's heart. When he saw Judas do what he done, I bet it broke his heart. But you want me to tell you what Matthew didn't do? He didn't grieve the Lord. We talk about don't grieve the Lord, probably he didn't grieve him. And you know what? Honey, when you show, when you follow God, and you do what God wants you to do, you'll be Matthews. Yeah. You'll get lifted up. I'm going to tell you yeah. who felt good right. that day. Right. Matthews. Yeah. But are you a Matthews? And I'll let you go with that. I, I could have short with night. I got a ton more stuff I go all over the place. Are you a Matthews? Are you supporting? Are you praying for your relief for other people? Or are you mad because you didn't get it? You're what? I believe Matthew was one of the most faithful disciples. I mean, we talk about Peter. I love Peter because, well, I am associated. I love Paul because, you know, Peter's a sinner saved the things he did, the man of conviction God put on him, and all the greatness of Paul. The quiet man in the church. Yeah. Matthew. Yeah. Everybody, you know, hey, I'm going to say, you know, I like me. I, you know, I talk a lot. What do do? So, you know, God uses you for what gifts you got, I guess. My mouth on it. <laughs> but I'm going to tell you what I've heard some people pray around this altar. Man, I can't, man, I'm thinking, pray for me. You know what I mean? Yeah. Be a man. Be a man. I believe that, like I said, probably the greatest sovereign. And you don't hear me on the way to hear nothing else about it? Because, like so many of you that I know, do, behind the scenes, things is happening. And you're not saying that. God needs more Matthews in the church. Ain't enough sin. Wow, Mount Peter's right here is one of them. Yeah. What he needs is Matthews. That'll make a church strong. Amen. Now we know about the wall putting stones in it. Now we know what kind of stone you need to be, and that's a Matthews. Amen. Amen. I appreciate you being here tonight. Pray for me. <coughs> Pray for y'all. I want to sing. I want to sing. I like to sing. I want to sing. <laughs> so, the suit, the, the sing. Who plays the piano? We got one we're still in here. She got one. We're singing primitive. We're singing primitive bad style. So we'll pick a good one. I want to sing. Somebody might need to know the Lord. Somebody might want to come to the altar and pray. I mean, God's moving. Don't wait. I tell you what, I'll talk about Zach in one minute. Zach has climbed up in a tree. Zach has climbed up in a tree. And Jesus passed by. And he said, come down out of that tree. But I can tell you what happened. Zach has stayed in that tree too long, preacher man. Jesus passed on by. Come out of your tree. What is your tree? Hey, seek the Lord. You climb up in a tree. But if you stay in that tree too long, you may be in a pew, and you're seeking God, and that's your tree, but you don't come down out of it when he calls you. Amen? Amen. Don't be, don't be, that, don't be, be like that. Just come down out of that tree. He was a sinner, and Jesus Christ was looking for sinners. I ain't going to save the righteous. I said it so much, because I believe he ain't going to save the lost. Don't stay in the tree. Internet, if you're in your tree tonight, if Jesus is passing by, you better get out of it. You better get out of it. Because when he passes by, he may not come back around again. Yeah. He don't have to promise you that. That's right. And you know what? Zacchaeus was being pressed by the world. There's another thing. He said over there, he was being pressed. They were the crowd of people. He was being pressed. And so, and he was a man of little stature. Make you feel like nothing today. I can tell you one, it'll make you feel like something. That's Jesus right. Christ. Right. It'll make you feel like you're six foot tall and bulletproof. I don't Amen. care. But let me tell you, he was pressed. You know what? He, you might be pressed by the world today. Sin's pressed in on you. Call up in that tree and seek Jesus. It's not just to see him. That's why he climbed up in that tree. Amen. Climbed up so that he could see Jesus. Pressed by the world today, they ain't one thing to do. I'm on that tree, and I tell you, the best tree there is. I call this the tree house right here, the church. Yeah. You don't get in this tree house and look for Jesus. Ask you what you got, brother. Y'all have a good night. I love you. I appreciate you.
Pray for me. I'll be praying for y'all. Y'all just mean the world to me. You just don't know. Now we're going to take you back in time now. We're going to do Grim Baptist style. Verse 10, man. What do you say? 9.45 till 11 o'clock and I want to make sure all the bugs and the kinks that might be there is worked out because this is a serious thing. Amen. Every service we probably have anywhere from three to five hundred people that watch. Amen. How many is in your Sunday school class? Yeah. Right. Tell me what's important. I'll give it that. Tell me Amen. what's important. I appreciate them. Appreciate what they do. They're Matthews's. Yeah. Remember that. Thank God for these. There could have been others since then. Find you a good church. I believe in the local fellowship of believers. When Jesus went through the different villages, where was he on the Lord's day? In the synagogue. I ran into a couple this week said, we do the online Bible study. They just wanted got saved a couple years ago, got baptized. His wife just got baptized a couple of weeks ago. I said, where do you go to church? Oh, well, we do the online Bible study somebody does online. But you know what's sad about that? They're missing out. 
We need each other yes. as brothers and sisters Amen. in Christ. Amen. Moses said, the journey's too great for you. We need one another. Most importantly, we need the Lord. Amen. Thank God for these. Thank God for working. Thank you for your message. I appreciate every one of you. Sing one more verse. Somebody out there may still be lost. Right. Simple. Right. Repent, ask Jesus in your heart. He'll save you. He'll save you. and shortcomings before we fall short. We miss the mark, dear Lord. We just ask that you please forgive us and have your forgiving mercies upon us, dear Lord. We sin each and every day, dear Lord. It's our nature. Dear Lord, we just uh, can't seem to help ourselves sometimes. We just please ask you to forgive us of those things when we fail you. Dear Lord, we just thank you for tonight. Dear Lord, we thank you, Brother Chris, and the message he preached. And Dear Lord, just, uh, you know, when we are called to go out here and do your work, dear Lord, let us stand up and let us step forward and let us yeah. do what you've called us to do, dear Lord. And you'll open some doors and you'll bless in ways that we just can't understand sometimes, Lord. We just we just thank you for all the blessings that you that you do have and that you do bestow upon us, dear Lord. We just thank you so much. We thank you for each and every one here. That, you know, we do ask a you know a special prayer for our prayer list. It is lengthy, dear Lord. And I know there's some here mentioned tonight and there's uh, unspoken requests, dear Lord. You know each and every heart. You know that you know, you know what our desire is, you know what our needs are, you know what uh, we stand in need of and Dear Lord, you're the only one that can reach down to comfort and heal, dear Lord. We just ask that you be a part of our lives, dear Lord. And dear Lord, we just, uh, we just look for you to do works uh, in our church, in our Sunday school, in our online ministry. And we've seen some results of that tonight, dear Lord. Where we've, seen one, we've seen one saved and one rededicated, dear Lord. Just continue to work with us and work amongst us and let your Holy Spirit just flow, dear Lord. You know, let us, uh, you know, let us be in unity. 
you know, let us be in fellowship and one accord, dear Lord, in the things that we do as we praise you and uplift your name because, Lord, you are the one that we're here to worship and uplift and we want to give you all the credit and the praise and honor because our righteousness is as filthy rags, dear Lord, but through your blood, through the blood of Jesus Christ, we're made righteous, dear Lord, and you look on that and, you know, with your help and the Holy Spirit, we can do mighty works here on this earth, dear Lord. Lord, just thank you for everything that you do. Our most humble prayer is for that lost soul that does not know you as Lord and Savior. We would pray that they would accept you for it. It's eternally too late. Give them one more opportunity, Lord. We just please ask you that. Give them one more chance. Dear Lord, we'll always give you the praise, honor, and glory. For it is in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.